Hi everyone, I wanted to start off with saying it's time for an update for the climate given the extremes we've seen in the summer of 2020, including the lack of precipitation, the warm temperatures, and now the wildfires. Here's a quick look back at some of the extremes we've seen over the past several years. Take your time to read those and see if you recall them or maybe they impacted your area. So we've seen a weather pattern over the past year, 2019-20, where basically the storm systems moved across Southern California but skipped much of the Northern Great Basin and Northern California. Thus, the result was a drought that developed over the course of 2019-2020 and continues today. And that drought has expanded across the Great Basin and the Four Corners area due largely in part to the winter and also the lack of monsoon in 2020. So let's talk quickly about the 2019 to 2020, a recap of what impacted across Southern California. We had quite a few weather events with heavy rain, with high winds, with impacts across our region, including heavy snow in our mountain passes. It was a really wet start to 2019-2020. Uh, it was heavily focused just on Southern California, like most of the winter, because of that storm track we just mentioned. Precipitation was much above average in Southern California, as shown here. Very dry across Northern California and the Pacific Northwest for the first half of 2019-2020. Now, in the middle of the winter, January through February 2020, it was really dry. We were talking about record dry. February 2020 was the driest month on record for much of California. And why does that matter? Well, that really set the stage to the very dry and the drought conditions that set up for Northern California. Now, luckily here in Southern California, we could have been in the same boat, but we had significant precipitation as discussed in the early part of 2019, 2020, and then the latter part, especially in March and April. March and April looked like this, incredibly wet across Southern California, continued dry in Northern California. In fact, precipitation broke records in the month of April, all time records for the wettest Aprils in parts of San Diego County as shown in the purple there. And it was wet in the deserts as well. And of course we had a lot of wildfires that did bloom. What do I mean by a wet year? We saw some incredible precipitation during the latter half of the winter, especially March and early April, as shown here, with widespread flooding in parts of northern and western San Diego County. And here's an overall look at the water year 2019-2020. You can see Southern California was the only region that ended up being one to two times above average, and it dropped off sharply as you went to the north. And also what's resulted in the severe drought conditions in Northern California. Now, if you look at 2019, 2020 overall, you can see that most of the atmospheric rivers or the tracks of significant tropical moisture in the winter were across either Southern California or the far Pacific Northwest. Now here in Southern California, we usually only average a few of these atmospheric rivers per year. Now we did not have strong ones during 2019, 2020, but it was a very wet year. Okay, I wanna take a look at what the weather pattern has been and what it currently is. So what delivered such an extreme winter of 2019, 2020? Well, the jet stream was very, what we call amplified, going up and over a massive upper level high pressure system in the North Pacific that would not and did not move diving the jet stream over it and then down into Southern California. So if you're on the wrong side of that jet stream, it is dry and often windy and often warm. But also notice what happened in the Pacific. Not only was this upper level high pressure system steering the storms up and around and over, it was also allowing significant warming to occur in the Pacific as shown on the left image. Much above average water temperatures continue in the North Pacific as shown. Now, how about what's been going on lately, June through September, 2020? 
So we talked about it earlier. The monsoon season basically didn't exist. It occurred for about a week in August. Now we did get lucky in parts of the Big Bear area where several inches of rain occurred on the very upper elevations of Onyx and San Gregorio Peak, but most other places saw little to no rain. Temperatures, temperatures as a result of the drier air in our air mass were really warm. Now, it was especially the inland areas, the coastal areas where we saw record hot temperatures such as Palm Springs all the way up to Victorville. Now, what was the weather pattern this summer? Well, normally the jet stream retreats, right? Well, it did retreat, but we had almost a double whammy where we had the same upper level high pressure over the North Pacific parked over the North Pacific, and then the more normal upper level high formed across the desert southwest as shown here. The two combined for a really warm and a weak monsoon. Now, what they also did when they combined is they brought record hot temperatures in the early part of September to Southern California. Speaking of record hot temperatures, take a look here. This is Palm Springs. When you look at a period from July 1 all the way through early September, you can see it's the warmest on record for Palm Springs. And recent years, yes, they're right behind it. When you look at the mountains, how about the mountains? It should be a lot cooler there. Well, compared to average Idlewild, so far it is the top six. So it was really warm, really warm in the upper elevations in our mountains as well. And we've seen that's been kind of the trend the past couple of years. Now, what about a location like San Diego that's on the ocean? How was it affected? Well, actually 2020 wasn't uh, anywhere near record warm for San Diego. And you have to look back only to 2018, where number two for the period July through early September. And then the 2014 and 2015, those were the really hot years in San Diego. 2018, by the way, was also very humid, muggy, as our ocean temperatures started to break records. Speaking of hot conditions, take a look at this table here. Our all-time high temperatures were reached at some locations in our most recent September heat wave. This includes areas around Chino, El Cajon, Alpine, where there was a large fire, and even Escondido. Unprecedented hot conditions. Not just daily or monthly records were broken. We saw those easily occur but we also saw all-time high temperatures. What do I mean by monsoon? Well, we did have some thunderstorms like shown here, and they did produce heavy rain, but they were few and far between and only lasted for about a week in summer 2020. There was a lot of lightning too, but again, everything was combined to basically a week of storms. But you can see all our mountain areas did see at least some thunderstorm and rain activity, including the San Diego mountains as shown here. Here's an example of how isolated but heavy the rain can be. This is heavy rainfall that fell in one of those storms on the middle of August, just north of the Apple Fire Scar over San Gregorio Mountain in the upper headwaters of the Santa Ana River. Now, unfortunately, it wasn't enough to make a difference in our fuel. So we went from a very wet winter with a lot of fuel in the spring to a warm summer, to an inland area, desert and mountains, record warm summer, and then the result has been record dry fuels. You can see here in early September, the fuels in our mountains are sitting at all time lows. The blue line is hovering over the red line, all time lows, late August through early September. We've had some fires as the result, some big fires as well. This is some imagery of the Apple fire that started July 31st, but most recently we've had two large fires as well, one in San Diego County and one largely in San Bernardino County, uh, very close to the Apple fire. Now, when we look further out into the upcoming winter and the outlook period, do we have an El Nino or La Nina? That's usually the question, right, in the fall in Southern California. We've seen some really extreme years over the past several years. In fact, we had the mega drought of 2012 all the way up to 2016, which produced major impact to our region from the drought and the fires. But remember, that drought became worse in Southern California during one of the strongest El Ninos on record. 
We also had extreme years back to back across Southern California as shown here. These years really had no relation to El Nino or to La Nina. They were back to back similar years in the Pacific Ocean near the equator in what we call El Nino or La Nina, but the results, the impact, the amount of rain was dramatically different in each one of those years. One really wet, one really dry, record dry. All right, so can we blame it on El Nino anymore or give it credit? Well, I think it's a lot more complicated to that, and there's a lot of other things that we're not sure what's going on globally and also in the Pacific. But it doesn't mean El Nino doesn't form, and it doesn't mean La Nina doesn't form. In 2015-16, it was the strongest El Nino on record, but yet the impacts and the rainfall was not what we had typically expected to see in Southern California. So, where do we go from here when we look at El Nino or La Nina? Well, we'll talk a little bit about it coming up here. The weather patterns in two of the big El Ninos previously were basically right across Central and Southern California. Big, large jet stream, numerous storms. Now, back in 2015-16, what went wrong? We had the same powerful jet stream that we often see in a strong El Nino year, yet it turned just north. It turned just north and missed us. Didn't miss us by far. It was record wet up in Seattle, but it missed us enough that we ended up having a drier than average winter and worsening drought. So some of the recent years here, we've seen some incredible results, even during the opposite phase, La Nina. One of the wettest years on record for California, 2016-17, for all the state and for Southern California, remember, was in a week, La Nina. We've seen some changes going on since about 2014-2015 with warming in the Pacific Ocean. And we've also seen changes where the phasing of our local water here in Southern California is not in phase anymore with the El Nino. So we're seeing El Nino form as normal or La Nina form as water, but we continue to see warmer than normal temperatures no matter what in our coastal Southern California area. How about for precipitation? Do we see relationships at all? There's a lot of numbers on this screen. I'm only going to talk about San Diego. You can see starting back in 29 and 2010 that we had an El Nino ended up being average precipitation. Following year, easy to forget, it was a La Nina, very wet. In fact, we had a couple massive atmospheric rivers buried into that year. Then after that, we started to dry out and we were in a La Nina. So we seemed like it was the La Nina maybe influencing this. Then we had an El Nino that was weak and then we had a super El Nino that was dry. And actually not just dry, but well below average. The following year, we had a very wet year. That's that 2016-17 I talked about. And there really was nothing going on in the Equatorial Pacific Ocean. Then we developed a weak La Nina and saw record dry conditions here in San Diego. Finally, most recently, La Nina formed again, and we were really wet, about 13 inches in San Diego, where we averaged 10. Then the following year, the most recent year, a very weak El Nino, and we were similar, very wet. Unfortunately, the correlation doesn't seem to be matching up very well. All right, now let's take a look at our ocean conditions and what's currently going on. I mentioned briefly before about La Nina for this winter. It is forming as we speak and expected to continue through the winter season. 2020, 2021. However, notice the really warm water right now in the Eastern Pacific, again, still in that permanent area in the Northern Pacific that just won't go away. You can look on Southern California, uh, following our record heat wave, water temperatures have recovered again, and we now see temperatures much above average in early spring. We've had some wild swings, marine heat waves and marine cold waves. We've seen temperature swings in our ocean from 60 to 80 just in one month of August in our Southern California Bight. Really extreme conditions, and we can't contribute this to El Nino or La Nina. All right, here's the official outlook. We're calling for this September, in addition to the really warm conditions we've already had, to continue to be warm or above average across much of the West as shown here. Now, it doesn't mean we won't have any cool downs or any precipitation in California, 
But overall, it looks like most of the state of California remains below average. With no signal in Southern California, we don't usually get much precipitation other than monsoon in September. Now when we go deeper into the fall, averaging September through November, the first part of the fall season and then into deep in the fall just before winter begins, it looks like above average warmer conditions are going to persist with us and potentially a late start to the rainy season with most of the precipitation and the above average precipitation staying north across the Pacific Northwest. All right, what is the summary? August was very dry. Uh, it was a record dry monsoon until we had that one week of precipitation, but it was very late monsoon, very isolated. Despite the wet winter we had last year in the wet April, live fuel is now critically low. Dead fuel moisture I showed you was also record low. We had 11 heat waves so far in this summer, and we've seen record breaking temperatures in deserts. Sea surface temperatures, they have had wild swings from 60 to 80 degrees. And most recently in August, we broke a record tying last year with 80 degree water temperatures at Scripps La Jolla. The outlook predicts warmer than average conditions running through this fall. And, and also no indications for precipitation chances being unusual. And remember, typically September, we don't see any precipitation here in Southern California, except for the monsoon. October usually is dry. That's our Santa Ana season. So we will have Santa Ana season and we will have Santa Ana events in October, November. And the unfortunate part is it looks like we'll be critically, extremely dry as we enter into those Santa Ana wind events. We are entering a weak La Nina, but as I showed you, there's not much indication that that means anything for our area in Southern California. Thanks for tuning in everyone. And we'll have an update later in the fall.